Okay, let's get to our reporter Tang Bo, who is now at the uh, Space C Command Center in Beijing. Uh, you mentioned uh, that Tianzhou One will approach another parking spot soon. Uh, what is it right now? Well, right now the two spacecrafts are less than 120 meters from each other, um, and, and 120. And yeah, 120 meters uh, away from each other. And right now, the Aerospace Command Center has already finished the examination of the Tiangong-2 space lab, and all the statistics and data show that the Tiangong-2 is in a very good condition and is more than ready to, uh, to, to for the docking, final docking process. And right now, uh, since the spacecrafts are getting closer and closer, many precision instruments have been turned on to help with the docking. Uh, for example, an, an optical imaging instrument has been turned on, and also on Tianzhou-1, some small rocket engines have started to work to provide reverse force to slow down and stabilize the approaching process. Mm. And in about 30 minutes, the complex of Tianzhou-1 and Tiangong-2 will be completed, and then a combined operations um, of this complex will take place for two months. And after that, Tiangong-1 will separate from Tianzhou, uh, Tian, uh, Tianzhou-1 will separate from Tiangong-2 and will initiate an autonomous orbiting missions to carry on experiments and tests for three months. So yeah. All right, thank you, Tambo. And uh, on the window on the right-hand side, we see uh, the optical images uh, taken of mm, the okay. two oh. spacecrafts. Uh, they're approaching uh, each other uh, from 400 meters to 120 meters. At that parking spot, they would do some maneuvers, adjust their positions, uh, and testing out the instruments, and then approach even further. You're now watching a live broadcast of the rendezvous and docking of Tianzhou 1 and Tiangong 2 in space. Uh, so we are, we are using uh, our own indigenous technologies uh, for yes. this to happen. Uh, tell us uh, how sophisticated are our technologies? And, and uh, well, you know, that's, uh, we use, uh, for the whole uh, approaching and the docking procedure, we need many sensors. We need microwave reader. Uh, as the uh, radio measures uh, mm -hmm. to measure the relative distance, distance. Uh, relative speed, and also the relative uh, attitude. And also we need LiDAR uh, to have a, a mid-range measurement. And finally, in the final approach, we need optical sensors uh, to measure uh, these parameters. Mm -hmm. uh, for the microwave reader, you see uh, it is quite different from all other countries. Uh, it uses a pseudocode continuous wave uh, angle measurement. You don't need to uh, remember this. I totally this have, don't, don't have any yes. idea what you're talking you, about. You, you only need to remember that. But I know that it's it a radar, a, the yes. testing distance. Uh, it is a very advanced technology. And comparing with former missions, as I mentioned, it has been minimized. The size is only almost half the size before. And uh, the, the, the power consumption is only two thirds of the uh, previous version. So it is an up upgraded version. And besides that- You mean upgraded version from the previous document? Yes, uh, 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 comparing with those, those mounted on the Shenzhou spaceship. Uh, and you see, uh, this is uh, Tianzhou, uh, two, uh, Tianzhou 1, and the, uh, the radar is mounted on this side, and the transponder is mounted on Tiangong 2. Mm. Uh, besides the function of the mirroring the relative par parameters, it can also provide the vehicle to vehicle data link. Mm. So uh, the size is smaller. So they communicate with each other. Yes, when they the communication is very critical for each other to uh, cooperate uh, very and, uh, closely. And, and the whole process, uh, now we have already reached the 120 meter parking spot, which means uh, the two space entities are 120 meters away from each other on an orbit uh, 380 kilometers above the Earth. So they are fast approaching, but before that happened, they need to communicate uh, read the distance between the, the, those two, and all the process will be done autonomously. So uh, it the, is a uh, robotic process. Uh, the, very, when in a very far distance, uh, the, whole, uh, the process uh, of the both vehicles are controlled by the ground. But in a very short distance, uh, for instance, such as those uh, after, 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 after the 120 meter, uh, after 400 meter, uh, uh, it, the, the vehicle will be controlled by itself or in the autonomous mode. Uh, because you see, all the parameters determine the movement coming from the vehicle itself. So why we let robotic control take over rather than being controlled by the st ground staff? Yes, because uh, I think the robotic. Uh, can see better than uh, what we see on the Earth because uh, communicating with Earth would take some time, and also 
uh, when you're orbiting the orbit at uh, seven kilometers per second, uh, you run out of range very quickly. And sometimes you have a, a miscommunication. Uh, this happens when you do not have enough uh, antennas, TTNC facilities, and uh, in orbit uh, uh, facilities to, to link the data. So autonomous and self-controlled uh, mechanism is very important for uh, automatic uh, docking at the final stage. And, and if it is a robotic process, if something went wrong, can human beings on the ground override it? Yes, we, we are keeping constant monitoring, all, all, not only on, on visual uh, connections. As you see, the, the light has been switched on. Uh, we can also see, uh, see this at TTNC data where uh, there is a mistake or there is a misconnection. I think this is the picture of Tian Zhou Wan taking uh, of Tian Gong Tu. <clears throat> on the right hand side, I presume that's Tian Gong Tu. Uh, well, I think this picture should or be the other way uh, around. from Tian Gong Tu to <clears throat> Tian Zhou Wan, I think. Because you see, uh, for, this picture, uh, for this procedure, the Tian Zhou Wan is uh, active. Uh, site. Uh -huh. uh, the, uh, the solar panels of the uh, Tian Gong 2 should be changed to a parallel uh, position. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, from this picture, it look, looks more like the uh, camera from Tian Zhou 1 to Tian Gong 2, I think. So is Tian Zhou 1 taking picture of Tian Gong 2? Uh, I, I should also emphasize, during this procedure, we choose uh, to do this under the sunlight because we've already tested this uh, situation in Shenzhou 8 mission. Mm -hmm. And uh, our Optical sensors. Because that we need uh, power no, for solar, uh, pa no, solar uh, panel to no, work. No, no, no. Uh, because, uh, actually speaking, the, the sunlight is a disturbance to the optical sensors. But we have already can handle this situation. So we choose in the sunlight. Although, actually speaking, it is a risk. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, we can handle that. Uh, so it brings more chance uh, to uh, ensure us to can. Uh, if it is in the sunlight, does it have any bearing on maneuver of orbital? Uh, no, no, we, we don't need. Uh, just, uh, just recognize the, the sunlight as a disturbance to so the optical just, system. So we want to test out the difficult version of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now you're watching uh, the live broadcast of rendezvous between Tian Zhou Wan and Tian Gong Tu. Uh, they are now 120 meters away from each other. And another thing I was told that this time they're doing it in a quick way. Uh, what do you mean by quick way? It, it, it is supposed to take place in a matter of six hours, which usually took uh, several Two days. days. Two days, yes. yes. Uh, no, that's, that's what is different of a short approach rather than... Short approach is more like uh, for emergency cases. If you have a, a short supply that you cannot last for more, more, more than one day in the station. If you there's need, not enough need, fuel. You need something desperately and you have to have a quick connection. Yes. So the quick connection is, is for supply uh, in a timely fashion, but also uh, uh, to demonstrate the capability of, of orbiting. Because once you launch the orbit, it's, uh, it's only an elliptical orbit. You have to mm -hmm. adjust to the sp space station orbit, which is a circular orbit. OK, I was just told, uh, I want to elaborate. Uh, the two windows that were mentioned on the right-hand side is from Tianzhou 1 looking at Tiangong 2. On the left-hand side is the other way around. Is the Tian Gong Two uh, looking at Tian Zhou One? So they are approaching one another, but still 120 meters away. And this is uh, from this point on, they will be controlled robotically, autonomously, by the program on board the computer. On board. Uh, I think mm. uh, at this moment, the capture ring from the active side of the APS ha has already been sticked out for about 300 millimeters. I think it's rapidly approaching. It's much larger. Uh, it is much larger from, so they are actually fast approaching one another. Yes, at the final stage, uh, 30 meters, they, uh, they will do the final alignment and see if everything is in line and uh, uh, you, so, know, you have to be So they're precise. approaching now 30 meters away from each other. And at this stage, the Tian Gong 2 uh, space station has completed, supposed to complete it, all the checkup. And the space lab's optical sensor chip, uh, also called the docking eye, is ready to observe and recognize 
the approaching a cargo ship. Look, this uh, this is a video absolutely from the Tianzhou one to looking at the uh, Tiangong two. As I mentioned, the solar panels of the Tiangong two has changed to a, to a parallel, parallel pos position. Uh, position to avoid the disturbance of the reflected light to mm. the optical sensors because the Tianzhou one is the active one. And uh, the 30, point, uh, 30 meter parking point will be the final checking point to test every sensor and every uh, engines for the final uh, impact is okay. And, and do they have to, uh, does Tianzhou one have to slow down at this moment? It will, uh, sl uh, it will uh, stop and uh, keep in this uh, position. Keep that in this position for, for some time. Yes. To test out uh, each other. To check every subsystem. Uh, as we were told, that Tinder One has already arrived at the 30 meter uh, mooring point. The cargo ships are reverse thrust engine uh, switched on at 120 meter mooring point in order to ensure. Uh, the accuracy of the docking, it slowed down, and then it stopped at 30 meter point uh, to test uh, one another. This is a uh, computer animation. Now it starts to move closer again, and, yes. and with some uh, thrust uh, adjustment of its positions. Yes. Uh, we have uh, small, very small engines to control the position also, and also control the attitude. We must establish Tell us how, how important to maintain proper positions of both uh, uh, crafts. Uh, because uh, this, is, this requirement comes from the docking mechanism. Because as we mentioned, we use the APS. Uh, the advantage of ATBAS is that it can afford a very uh, heavy spacecraft mm. to dock with each other. But the, on the other side, wow. it raises a very strict requirement. To it is vehicles. approaching very fast uh, from the the computer stimulation that we saw. And now we see the uh, optical images of each other, uh, the space lab and this is the, the cargo. The this is Tianzhou 1. Yes. Tianzhou 1 fast approaching Tiangong 2. You can with the docking, docking port already in obvious view. You can see the three guide plate on the capture ring of the active one. Of well, the, they uh, are about to contact and capture one another. The Tianzhou one has now arrived. It is almost to dock with Tiangong 2. And there it goes. Oh, great. And there it goes. How, how can you tell it is a successful docking or not? Not yet, because we uh, still have many procedures. Uh, we need to uh, dump the energies of the impact. And because two uh, spacecrafts have impact, there might be some uh, shocks for yes, both. Yes, uh, so the, the vibration, the, the energy must be dumped. Uh, be, after that, we will have the called forced alignment to reduce uh, all the errors, the attitude errors and position errors mm. uh, to, of each other. After that, we will have a pulling closer process because we stick out the capture ring for about 300 millimeters. Mm. Uh, the pulling closer need about uh, 240 seconds. Uh, after that, we will pull in tightly. Mm. With the 12 hooks, uh, each have the pulling force about three times, uh, with uh, 36 times uh, totally. So they can be linked together closely. Yeah. And, and what kind of a test does it have to happen to make sure they are very uh, closely linked and there is no uh, mistakes? Well, uh, this is the inside cabin picture of Tiangong 2. Uh, uh, Tianzhou One. Tianzhou One. Uh, uh, Tianzhou One. That's the cargo. That's the cargo. So a lot of parcels that are the cargoes on board, and those parcels are, supp are supposed to be transported to Tiangong Two. No, no. Uh, not no, this time. Not this time. We got nobody there. <laughs> so it will stay there, not transported to Tiangong Two, no. as but it is supposed to be transported yeah. to Tiangong. Th those are simulation packages. That in oh, the those future. are simulations, yes. not real cargoes. Yes, but those probably we pack in there probably some scientific experiments. But in the future, if it is a, a freighter, a cargo ship, it's supposed to transport. For Tianzhou 2, yes. yes. Tianzhou 2 will do yeah. that. Because Tianzhou 2 will dock with Tianhe core module of China's future space station. You should, uh, you should remember, always remember, there is a basic pin principle for the operation of the sta uh, station. If there are astronauts in a sta uh, uh, station, there must be a lifeboat 
for the Mir and ISS, it is the Soyuz spaceship. Uh -huh. For China space station, it is the Shenzhou spaceship. Uh -huh. So uh, if we want to trans transfer the crews from the cargo ship to the station, we must have astronauts inside. Okay. But at, at that moment, we also must have a Shenzhou spaceship to mm. with that. Once again, uh, Tianzhou-1 and Tiangong-2 has joined. Uh, now it has become a one. Uh, many testings are going on. The docking rings are pulling back, I suppose, the process. Any deviations must be corrected. Docking rings will, be, will not draw back until all the corrections are complete. Uh, the latches are designed to taper off, ensuring that the closer the two spacecraft get, the tighter the connection will be. And then docking latches starting to lock up. Uh, they're moving at high speed, so the rel relative speed has become uh, 0 0.2 meters per second. And then the docking mechanism phase is seeding off, ensuring uh, the possible connection between the two spacecrafts. The picture we see now, uh, uh, the docking process, some light can be seen uh, in the tunnel. If that happens, means the sealing process has not been completed. So in the future, uh, uh, the cargo ships, uh, parcels, and, and, and payloads will be transported to the space lab automatically. Uh, no, uh, but by it has to be astronauts. manually uh, done by, by astronauts. astronauts. Yes. We have a, a 0 0.8 meter uh, internal transfer channel, uh, which is 0.8 meter wide. Uh, meter wide. The, 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 so the that's the channel. largest size a parcel can be. Yes. So the, uh, the largest one uh, uh, is in HTV of Japan. Uh, it has a very uh, uh, larger one, the transfer channel, which can trans uh, transfer directly the uh, international standard rack uh, from the payload, uh, from the cargo bay to the International Space Station, mm. which is very convenient for you. But it is, HTV is the only one. The only one can, can accommodate to, such a large a, cargo yes, uh, have size. have a direct transfer. So in that case, uh, all the cargo that uh, in the future, uh, Tianzhou will transport will be at maximum 0 0.8 meters in width. Uh, that's only for the pressurized cargoes, uh, pressurized. which means that uh, it depends on the astronauts uh, transfer these cargoes. But, but, the, uh, but for the unpressurized uh, cargoes, uh, which be, will be mounted on the outside of the uh, cargo bay, it will be not necessary to have this limit. Mm. Because in the future, we will have uh, three versions of our Tianzhou. Well, those are the uh, pictures of actually ulterior of the spacecraft. Yes. Taken this is also a cameras video all. from the camera of Tianzhou 1 to Tiangong 2. Uh, in, in, in the screen, we can see the Tiangong 2, and we can see the uh, part of the cross, mm. the benchmark, to measure right. the uh, relative uh, attitude. You can see a small window. There's a small window. That's, that's on, on Tiangong Tiang 2. 2 yes. The Tiangong 2, because the astronauts are supposed to observe the outside through that window. Which means that in the future docking, you can see with your eye. And, and you can also override the docking process. Once you have an astronauts in Okay, on once you have astronauts on board. We have two rubber rings uh, on the uh, attached surface of the docking mechanism. And we should check the airtight ceilings if it is uh, tight enough mm. and no any leakage. And how, how can we tell that the refueling uh, uh, process can happen. Uh, what happened to the pipes of refueling at this moment? I believe uh, it will not happen today because it will you not see happen. that... Uh, it refueling is itself will not happen today. Yes. But the pipes are connected. It's, uh, the, uh, the surface is connected because uh, the, uh, the connection are on the surface of the uh, docking mechanism. Uh, so the uh, so this is a uh, the, the airtight ceiling is a basic requirement of, of for the refueling procedure. Mm. And before that, we should, uh, we should make it sure that the whole pipe system is clean. So the, once the docking is completed, the, the docking of the pipes are completed at the same time. So if you see a, a good successful docking, the pipes are then connected and then pressurized to see if there's a linkage yeah. between... Uh, and no leak. Yes, and, and before we can uh, start pumping the, uh, the, fuel the fuel into the other tank, which has also has a meter that you can read on Earth, which mm. is uh, transferred. We, we uh, can tell on the ground we can tell whether on the ground. that is uh, going on well. Which tank has how many fuel? Yes. 
Now you are watching a live broadcast of the docking of Tianzhou One and Tiangong Two. Obviously, they have been connected. Uh, now many testings are still going on uh, to ensure that it is well connected. Uh, there is ITET. After this connection, the combination will be controlled by Tiangong Two. Uh, the, uh, at this moment, the Tianzhou one will be a uh, passive, pa uh, mm. passive uh, site. But actually, both sides can take control. Yes, uh, and you are very correct because uh, in the in the in the coming days, we will also check the technologies of the uh, control of the whole combination by Tianzhou one, mm. because this is also very necessary for the future space station. If there are some malfunction happened of the future uh, China space station, although the station will have a backup. Uh, control system on mm. the uh, on on the Tianhe module and on the Wentian module, but in in some cases we need to control the combination by Tianzhou, mm. and uh, this is one reason. And the other reason is, you know, that every time we have some more propellants uh, for the Tianzhou uh, Tianzhou cargo ship, and we can use these propellants to raise the orbit mm. of the combination, so to save the energy. So to best use of the resources, yes, we have to test out every option that we have. Yes. So you see, refueling is a major task of mm -hmm. this flight mission. But we also need to test many technologies connected to the cargo ship. Mm. And it seems the China Space Cro Program is a very deliberate and carefully thought after uh, scheme. Uh, now we have some reports from the ground control about the process. As mentioned by the uh, Ground Flight Control Center, uh, we need the, uh, we need the uh, uh, Tiangong 2 to come into charge of the combination. So it, it needs energy, and it needs the solar panels to capture the, the sun uh -huh. uh, again. And that's why it's, it is happening in, in the sun area. Uh, that's why they report. No, uh, that's, a, uh, that's why they report the, uh, uh, the Tiangong 2 capture the sun again. It says that the combination is working well. Uh, according to the report from the ground control. When they have be become completely uh, locked up, that means they will officially become one entity but controlled by Tiangong 2, as Yu Guang just mentioned. Tiangong 2 is now taking over control of the combination. And you are now looking at Tiangong 2 uh, from I think it's Tianzhou One's yes. camera. But they are flying in one combination uh, in an orbit of uh, 380 kilometers above the Earth. It has formed a 20 ton level combination, mm. uh, which China has never done before. Yeah, this is something I'm presented because uh, the weight of the whole combination is 20 tons, uh, the heaviest structure ever yeah. uh, in China's space history. They fly in one, it forms a combination. And, and how big is it? Can you give a, a sense of a? Well, the length of the Tiangong, uh, Tianzhou one is 10.6 uh, meter long, and the, uh, the, the wingspan is 14.9 uh, meter. 14.9? Mm. Yes. 10, uh, and 14. Uh, the, the, the width. The width is, the width, uh, is uh, 15, uh, 15 meter about uh, also. And the Tianzhou, uh, Tianzhou, uh, and the Tiangong 2, the length is about 10.3 meter. So the, the length of the total combination is about it's 20, 20 meters. meters. 20 yes. meters. It's much bigger. So it's larger even than the studio. You know, I often take pictures of Tiangong 2 in Beijing, uh, taking pictures of the tracks of Tiangong 2. It's very bright. Mm. And with the combination, it will be uh, even brighter. Mm. And, and that structure I, I was just referring to, it was bigger than this studio. So it means that the astronauts actually have a lot of space to move around. But the diameter is, is only 3.5 uh, meters the diameter is externally. Only but inside it's only probably 2 meters in diameter, mm. where you can just see, like say, that's uh, the height of uh, one person. But it's a long tube. Mm, it's a long tube. But the, uh, it's not very wide, but it's very long. 20 meters long, yes. But uh, inside the tank, it's only probably 10 or 12 meters because the backside of the tube are fuels, uh, control servers, and supply uh, and, and power systems. 
And there is one very remarkable feature of this flight mission is that uh, you know that in the uh, in the flight mission before we both use the ground station support and the Tianlian data relay satellites, mm. but this time we use the Tianlian data relay satellites as a major role. Mm. As a major role, this can greatly reduce the resources we needed for the whole control of the flight mission. Why? You know, why is that? Why we use? You know, if, uh, even if we already have four uh, space tracking ships. So the ground. Tiangong reports the deviation within the complex is clear. Even if we already have so four. You are, you are now talking about the communication part. Uh, of telemetry this. control. Uh, telemetry telemetry and, uh, control. And, uh, and the communication. PT and C. And this is Beijing. As the Beijing ground confirms, the Tiangong 2 and Tianzhou 1. Is docked and the complex it takes the control and the docking is finished and we will follow up based on our plan. Well, with that, uh, we can announce this is a success of the docking process with the ground control telling us they have become one and Tiangong 2 has already taken control. So many cargoes, and, and, and uh, the cargo is inside uh, Tianzhou One. Uh, we were told that probably more than a hundred parcels on board, and also they will be carrying out uh, scientific experiments. Yes, give us some sense of what kind of experiments will be conducted there without human beings. Well, uh, you know, that's uh, as introduced by, by Ms. Huang Weifen, the deputy chief uh, designer of the astronaut system of China Man's Space Program. We will have the uh, EVA suits for the future space station. Uh, these suits will, uh, will be used uh, for many times in the uh, future space station, but this time but we will we not have, re retrieve that. We have our EVA suits. Uh, uh, because we've got a space mission. flight, yes. Yes, uh, but that's only a, a, a technology demonstration, but not for the future operations of the station. So in the future, we will have an uh, improvement on our fate and space suit. So this time, we brought one in this cargo ship to test it can be uh, transported properly into space. And also, we have other, uh, as Mr. Xuan Song have mentioned, the simulated uh, cargo, such as the food, such as water, we should control. Uh, it's uh, the microbes in the inside the cargo bay uh, to ensure that uh, it can be uh, normally used by the astronauts in the future. But will those cargos be used by astronauts in the future or not? Uh, for this time, uh, everything will burn out once burn it out. comes back uh, to Earth atmosphere. So it's just a mock uh, just process. Just a mock up, yes. But uh, taking the advantage of this launch, we put uh, several instruments. Uh, on board, where we can do unmanned uh, experiments uh, under microgravity environments, especially in the uh, space environment. Uh, taking full advantage of this, we, we are powering some of the puzzles, if you see, uh, so that these experiments can be conducted in those mock up uh, and uh, the data can be transferred back to Earth. So uh, that we have can, some. Can you give us some example? What uh, kind of experiments? For example, oh. some of the uh, 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 space environment uh, detection systems. Some of the, uh, the what would they call it, a gamma ray burst uh, experiments. Uh, these are uh, done uh, especially a dedicated uh, mission to the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and they can decide what to put on board uh, this mission, and then get the scientific results back to Earth. I think that's one of the most important missions of space program is to make uh, scientific experiments and and testing out different uh, scientific. Uh, discoveries. Yes, yes, it is very interesting that you, that you know uh, Tiangong 2 has a very similar con configuration with, with comparing with Tiangong 1. But during the launch of Tiangong 2, we only make the propellant tank half empty. Mm. Uh, this makes more room and more chance for the scientific payloads to uh, uh, be uploaded because we have the refueling procedure. So we don't need the Tiangong <coughs> to have a uh, uh, have a so a we full, can make uh, room for more experiments. Yes, and also uh, this mission is special because Tianzhou One, as we mentioned, the cargoes will not be transferred because we don't have astronauts inside. So we only have some uh, simulated cargoes for the future uh, for the preparation of the future space. But we also have some some more scientific payload. Mm. So 
Now the docking is complete, you what would happen go. to both uh, Tianzhou 1 and Tiangong 2 in the next few days and months? Uh, you know that the, uh, the docking procedure is itself has already been very successful. Uh, and uh, on the surface of the attached uh, surface of the docking mechanism, there are pl uh, plug-ins and uh, there are also outlets. So there is a signal c connection. Mm. We should check every uh, subsystem. How, how long does it take? We can say, well, it is 100 percent sure. Uh, well, that depends on the uh, control plane of the uh, flight mission. Uh, but uh, originally, spe principally speaking, uh, we should check every subsystem uh, and check everything all the, uh, okay. And also, the most critical part is to uh, prepare for the refueling procedure. We will perform that three times, mm. and uh, totally, we will refuel two tons of the propellants, including two tons, two of tons fuel. from uh, not only the fuel but also the oxidizer. Mm. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, the MMH, the modern methyl hydrazine, and yeah, also the, the nitrogen uh, tetroxide. So the fuel and the Wait, oxidizer yeah. have to pump in separately. Yes. Otherwise, it will make explosion. <laughs> Because they are uh, hypergolic, we, we use a hypergolic propulsion system. Uh, when the two uh, mm. propellants meet together, they will explode at once. Mm. So uh, we need a separate pipelines uh, for the two uh, kind of uh, propellants. Uh, and before that, we should make the whole pipeline system clean mm. and also uh, prepare uh, the, the, also the right pressure uh, for the both tanks. To from one side to the other, and totally the uh, two tons from the, uh, the the propellant tanks to the uh, Tianzhou one to uh, Tiangong two uh, mm. space laboratory. Why do we have to fuel our space station constantly, uh, and does this refueling make sure that we can use the space station forever? Well, if you have enough fuel, if you have the, a sound structure, I think you can use, you can last it forever. But nothing lasts forever because uh, uh, the first space station, the Mir space station by the Russians, uh, was uh, disintegrated because of the number of accidents on board, the fires on board, uh, even the connection with the, with the cargo ship uh, mm -hmm. has some uh, mistake that uh, damages the exterior. Uh, so uh, uh, this, this thing, if you can maintain it in good shape and you have enough money to, to send fuels uh, to, to on board, uh, but some of the connections, uh, like we'll the rubber rings, oh. uh, like uh, uh, the metals, they will fatigue, the rubbers will, uh, will oxidize. So the mm. whole, whole process of disintegrating mm. in space is faster uh, in comparison with Earth because of the... Uh, the space environment is very harsh. Mm. Uh, thermals, uh, thermal uh, uh, auto emissions, uh, solar uh, radiations, uh, lots of hot. What, harsh what is the lifespan uh, for like Tiangong 2 and the future uh, space station that we are envisioning? Uh, 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 I think Tiangong 2 would last more than 10 years. 10 uh, years. Yes. Um, but in, uh, compared with the internationally, uh, the, uh, the International Space Station is. Uh, is completing in 2024, which is also over, over 10 years. Now this is a rerun of the whole process of docking and rendezvous between Tiangong 2 and Tianzhou 1. Uh, it started from 400 meters away from one another and then approached gradually to 120 meters, 30 meters, and then they are connected as one. This is a rerun of China's first cargo ship uh, connecting with China's space lab and forming a combination of a structure of 20 tons first time in the history of China's space program. And in the coming few days and weeks, it will try refueling the space lab from China's freighter cargo ship. So we can call it a success, initial success for this uh, rendezvous and docking. Uh, let me introduce you to another guest who is now watching the whole thing with us uh, from the United States, Dr. Jim Rice, senior scientist from the Planetary Science Institute. Uh, Jim, uh, you've been watching this, I presume. Uh, what is your view of what Chinese has been doing today? Well, first of all, congratulations, because it looks like a very successful rendezvous and docking. 
Um, you know, this is a, a wondrous technical achievement. Anytime two spacecraft uh, dock together in space, it's really a uh, cosmic ballet, very precise ballet at uh, spacecraft traveling, you know, over 28,000 kilometers an hour. And uh, it's, uh, even though this has been done the first time in 1966, over 50 years ago, like I said, it's still a wondrous technical achievement to see it happen. Uh, it, it takes a lot of uh, precise engineering and science knowledge to pull these things off. And what do you make of the Chinese uh, technological know-how levels in, in terms of doing this uh, after the Russians and, and the Americans? I think the Chinese have learned a lot of lessons from the Russians or the old Soviets in the 1960s and the Americans. And uh, it's allowed them to uh, leapfrog mm. and do things quicker. I mean, if you look back in the 1960s during the, you know, the space race between the Soviet Union and the U.S., um, it was uh, the process of moving pretty rapidly. But I think the Chinese have smartly learned that you don't have to reinvent the wheel each time. You mm. take the knowledge from previous nations and apply it, upgrade it with technology, and I think it's uh, you know pretty pretty obvious that, that China is a very up and coming space power in the mm. 21st century. And I understand that your research focuses on morphology and geology and history of water on Mars. Uh, you are the co-investigator of geology team leader on the Mars Exploration Rover project, uh, both the Spirit and Opportunity, and uh, has mission experience working on Mars Odyssey orbiter and lunar reconnaissance orbiter projects. Uh, China has also its own lunar and Mars ambitions. Uh, tell us about your experiences in those projects and, and, and what do you think of China's plans? Yeah, well, I, I'm very lucky because I grew up in the 1960s dreaming about space exploration and was inspired by the Apollo program. And uh, I was 10 years old when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin first landed on the moon. Mm -hmm. So that is why I'm doing my career. What were you thinking that, you know, when the they did that when you were 10? I was thinking I want to be part of that in the future. Uh -huh. I want to be part of uh, Martian exploration. And uh, so I've had the privilege of working on numerous uh, NASA Mars missions and uh, one lunar mission. And, um, you know, it, it, it's just really a privilege to be part of a team doing this complex uh, activity. And I'm sure people in China feel the same way. It's a very complicated uh, space, space flight. It is rocket science. It's very complicated, very hard mm. stuff to do. And you never know if it's ever going to work. It's not a given. It's very difficult. And um, it's pushing the limits of our technological uh, knowledge. And things can go wrong. You have to be able to uh, be flexible and adapt. But uh, for me personally, I've been very fortunate to work on these missions, still working on them. Um, and I know that China is planning a mission in November for using the Long March 5 to land on the moon and return a sample of, of lunar rock and soil, mm -hmm. which hasn't been done since the 1970s. Uh, you know, the U.S. obviously did it with the Apollo astronauts, and the Soviets did it with some uh, robotic missions. But uh, like I said, it hasn't been done in over 40 years, and uh, China is planning to do it in November, and I'm looking forward to that mission very much. It should be very exciting. And next year, China... Uh, I'm sure your, panel, your guests know this better than I, is planning to land a mission on the far side of the moon, which has never been done before, and bring back samples. So China's lunar program is very uh, ambitious and uh, vigorous. And um, so, uh, you know, I, the way things stand right now, I, the Chinese lunar program is going very strong. I know China also has plans to launch a mission in 2020 to Mars. Yeah. That will consist of an orbiter, a rover, and... And uh, which is, uh, if they can, you know, that's never been done before. It's always been done in stages, like we did flybys of Mars, then we orbited Mars, then we landed on Mars. But China, on its first Mars mission, is going to attempt to go into orbit and to land a rover on the surface, which, uh, you know, on, in Mars 2020 um, will be a very crowded place because the U.S. is planning to fly mm -hmm. a rover, the Europeans, and then the Chinese also. So do, do you sense they're, <clears throat> they're kind of... Uh space race in terms of getting to the Mars and, and, and the moon again? Not really. It's not the same as it was in the 1960s. With mm. the, the space race between the U.S. and the Soviet Union was a component of the Cold War. And it's a little different now. I, I, competition, I think, is a good thing because it you know, causes you to spur on and make advances. Um, but I guess the, big, you know, the question right now is 
um, is there going to be uh, cooperation? Mm. Um, and right now, there's no formal cooperation between NASA and the Chinese Space Agency. But I think it's probably open to be changed because, it, you, know, you know, like I said, when I grew up in the 1960s, I never dreamed the U.S. and the Russia would be working together in space. Uh -huh. We've been doing and, that for and decades can you now, envision so. a day that the Chinese astronauts can go to an American spacecraft and the other way around anytime soon? Um, I, I don't know when it will happen. I, I, a time frame, I can't give an exact date. But I, I, I don't think it's impossible. But like I said, you know, the U.S. and the Soviet Union joined spacecraft Apollo Soyuz in July of 1975. In the 1960s, no one thought that would happen. So I think it's uh, a fertile ground for cooperation. And I, I, I wouldn't write it off right now. I, I can't give you like it's going to happen in three years. It, it's, unfortunately, there's no timeline, I can tell you. But I, I think it's open. Uh, conversation and I think it's possible it will happen in the near future. Yeah, nobody should write it off. Thank you so much, Jim. Uh, that's Jim Rice talking to us from the U.S. Now let's bring in our reporter, uh, Tang Bo, who is now still at the Beijing Aerospace Command and Control Center. Uh, Tang Bo, it must be a jubilant crowd there at the Ground Control when they successfully docked uh, Tian Gong 2 with uh, Tian Zhou 1. Yes, indeed. Uh, well, when the connection devices are locked, the complex of Tian Gong One and uh, Tian Gong Two and Tian Zhou One has completed. And right now, Tian Gong Two uh, Space Lab is in control of the whole complex system, and while the Tian Zhou One is in a docked state. Well, last time when Tian Gong Two docked with the Shenzhou Eleven manned spacecraft, Tian Gong Two was in charge of the whole complex system, from the uh, orbiting uh, guidance and control system from uh, power supply to the communication with the uh, ground controllers. But this time, Tianzhou-1 is also able to be in charge of the whole complex system, but it is, right now it is standing by for the further operations. And six days later, Tianzhou-1 will try to refuel the uh, Tiangong-2 space lab, and if succeeded, China will become the third or the authority mm. after the European Spa uh, space agency and Russia to be able to refuel its orbiting space Crafts. And two months later, uh, Tian, Tianzhou 1 will separate from Tiangong 2 and will conduct individual orbiting missions to carry out experiments and tests. And, and after that, uh, Tianzhou 1 will try two more rendezvous attempts one from a very different direction and the other in no more than six hours rather than the usual two days. And currently, only Russia can do this six hour rendezvous and docking process. So, yeah. All right, that's uh, what Tianzhou, two, Tianzhou 1 will do in the coming few weeks. Thank you so much, Tang Bo, for your reporting from the Aerospace Command Center. Well, as Tang Bo said, uh, the cargo spacecraft Tianzhou 1 will fuel uh, Tiangong 2 Space Lab in about six days and perform experiments also in space. But what exactly are those experiments and how will they affect our lives? Our reporter Go Yinfei has this following. Apart from being the delivery man to China's space lab in orbit, China's first cargo spacecraft, Tianzhou-1, will carry out several experiments, experiments that can affect our future. We want to observe the proliferation and differentiation of human bone cells that have been genetically edited under microgravity circumstances, so that we can find a cure to the rarefaction of bones. China has over 120 million hepatitis B virus carriers. The disease kills over 500,000 people in the country every year. A cure has yet to be found, but the solution may lie in space. China topped the list of countries with the most patients suffering from liver disease. For those waiting for a liver transplant, it's very hard to find a donor. We hope to find a way to solve organ rejections via stem cell research in space. You may have seen the famous Hollywood movie, The Martian, starring Matt Damon. Space immigration, as depicted in the film, may not seem too far now. China has already done some research on that including making babies while traveling in space. We are also observing the process of differentiation from embryonic stem cells into germ stem cells in space. This is towards the long-term goal of space immigration. During space travel, which is measured by light years, we have to figure out a feasible way of human reproduction. Space exploration may seem remote and irrelevant to daily life. 
but through advances in research, experts say it could one day benefit everyone. Liu Yunfei, CGTN, Wenchang Space Launch Center. And a shipment of important upgrades are headed to the International Space Station. A cargo delivery flight was launched from Florida on Tuesday. Once the orbital ATK arrives, the ISS, ISS will be capable of conducting dozens of new scientific experiments and investigations. But it has been a long and fruitful journey for the space station itself. John Zarella explains. All right. Welcome to the International Space Station. Time flies. If it's the International Space Station you're talking about, time has pretty much flown by. It's hard to believe permanent human presence on the ISS began 17 years ago. Over the course of all those years, the ISS has outperformed just about everyone's expectations. Leroy Chow commanded the station for six months. I think all of us are, are a little bit pleasantly surprised by how smoothly things are going. Not to say that there aren't some issues aboard station or haven't been, uh, but by and large, it's gone a lot better than most of us expected. That is saying a lot. ISS is huge and complex. Example, it's the size of a U.S. football field with systems to generate oxygen and water. The electrical power system is connected by eight miles of wire. But just like your home, the station was designed to be maintained. Unlike your home, when something major does break, you can't call a repairman. 49 minutes into today's spacewalk, a good view of Peggy Whitson as uh, she uh, continues to work with a uh, ratchet wrench. So the astronauts are the repairmen and women. U.S. astronauts have conducted some 145 spacewalks from station airlocks many during construction, but also to do things like change out pumps and remove and replace batteries. I felt you yeah. quite a way. Right there, you want to try the connector? Yeah. The Russians have conducted more than 50. We've really done come a long way with EVA. It's really quite a mature uh, operation now. We, we've had our share of close calls and, and, uh, and things that didn't go right. But uh, uh, by and large, we, we know how to do it. And of course, it does come with more risk, but it's a necessary part of maintaining ISS. Maintaining also means constant resupply. About every two months, if there aren't launch delays or mishaps, the station gets a visit from an unmanned resupply ship. Thousands of pounds of food, clothing, science experiments, replacement equipment. Russian ships dock right to the station. The U.S. SpaceX and orbital ATK vehicles are snared. Astronauts get a kick out of that. We do a lot of science, like you mentioned. We've also had a lot of robotic arm operations where we've had uh, cargo vehicles arriving that we actually reach out and grab it with the robotic arm. That's been a lot of fun. The plan now is to keep the space station operational until 2024. There is uncertainty beyond that. The age of the station is one consideration, money is another. It costs NASA about $4 billion a year to maintain and operate the ISS. That's a lot of cash. Some experts argue that money could go to other NASA ventures, like the Mars program. John Zarella, CGTN, at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. So the International Space Station probably will retire by 2024, 24, and 2022. Chinese Space Station will be in orbit, hopefully. Uh, so that means by the year 2024, there will be only one space station in the sky. That's the Chinese version. Uh, it's possible, but there are also rumors it will, the ISS will uh, continue work to 2028, but it can be sure to work to 2024. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, but uh, after, at least at 2028, we, our uh, Chinese space station will be the only one in low Earth orbit. Mm. And what do you make of the Chinese space priorities? Uh, in America, there are debates whether uh, to have low orbit, um, outposts or to go deeper into space to Mars and asteroids. It seems China wants to do both low orbit uh, outposts, lunar projects, and also Mar Martian projects. What is the priority for China space 
program. The, 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 we're in the transition period of time where we, uh, we're moving from low Earth orbit to exploration projects and human presence uh, in, in low Earth orbit. Uh, uh, as, uh, as I always uh, say this, uh, that the developing countries are more focused on remote sensing, where developed uh, space powers mm -hmm. are more focused on space science and exploration missions. Uh, I think uh, uh, to, to, for, uh, to, for the betterment of uh, human on Earth, we need low Earth orbit to continue uh, providing us with infrastructures mm. such as meteorology, navigation, uh, remote sensing uh, for many applications. Uh, but we do have to satisfy ourselves, our curiosity, our desire to knowledge, our understanding to other planetary uh, bodies, or even to, ha to find a future for our, for our own species. Mm. That if we, if we st uh, stick to Earth, we will be a sitting duck. Mm. Uh, in the future, but for species to thrive, we have to find a, a planetary body that can satisfy our desires in the future. Mm. So this is one step that we take uh, on, on behalf of humanity, uh, not only uh, for Chinese missions, but also to, uh, to satisfy the human uh, character to, uh, characteristic mm. of curiosity and uh, desire for knowledge. And Jim just mentioned uh, whether China can work with uh, the United States and probably Russia um, on space exploration. Uh, China is not part of the International Space Station. Uh, will China be uh, okay asking other members to join our space station uh, programs in the future? We will already do that. Uh, you see, uh, just uh, uh, early in this year, uh, Mr. Wang Zhaoyao, the chief of China's manned space agency, has already signed an agreement with the, the head of the Italian space agency, Mr. Uh, Professor uh, Roberto Battiston. I talked with, with Roberto uh, last, last, uh, last, uh, last month. And also, uh, Mr. Zhou Jianping, the, the chief designer of China Manned Space Program, also uh, introduced the future plan of China's uh, space program open to other countries, mm. I mean the space station. The highest level will be a modular cooperation, which means that, uh, you know, that the current space station, as Mr. Xu has mentioned, is a T-shaped three-module design, but it is extendable. In the future, it is possible for us to launch the second core module, which will brought more docking nodes to the station. And Technically speaking, it will be possible for a module made by other countries mm. to dock with this station as part of it. So the, this is the highest level. Mm. The second level is the visit of the spacecraft from other countries. Okay. Dr. Buzz Aldrin told me, uh, is it possible to launch the sta China space station to the inclination of 28 degrees? I say, sorry, we can't because we need the <laughs> Shenzhou spaceship to launch from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center to, it can only reach the 40 degree. Okay. So, but it is possible for other countries to launch spacecraft, visit that our space leave station. a lot of room for cooperation. Well, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us so much information, Yan Song, and also Yu Guang. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot be um, in the command center to watch the whole process of Tianzhou 1 docking with Tiangong 2. But obviously, China has made another milestone step into its space exploration. And here in the studio, I can do a small thing. I can touch a button and have a small replay of the whole process. And good luck to China's space program. And thank you very much for watching this special broadcast here on CGTN. I'm Zhou Yuan Beijing. Goodbye for now.
对接机构开始。